The most common way to perform iteration in Python is to use the for statement. Remember that the for statement is what's called a definite iterator. That means that it iterates a definite number of times, either because we've given it a range of values to iterate over or because we're iterating over a structure like a list or a string or a dictionary where we can iterate by item, for example, iterating over all the characters of a string or iterating through all the keys of a dictionary. The consistency there is that we know that there are a definite number of items to be processed. Oftentimes, though, we might want to iterate where we don't know the number of times we're going to iterate. That type of iteration is typically referred to as an event-controlled iteration, an iteration where we're going to repeat a process until some event occurs. In order to do that, we have to have a different kind of construct, and that construct is called the while statement. So, for example, remember that if I wanted to print the word apple five times, the easiest way to do that would be to simply create a for statement that uses a range of five. Remember that range goes zero, one, two, three, four, and I print the word apple inside of the repetition. The range function returns the sequence of integers, zero, one, two, three, four. The variable counter takes on each of those values one at a time. When counter is zero, I print the word apple, go back up, counter becomes one, print the word apple, go back up, counter becomes two, and so on. And the result is that zero, one, two, three, four gives me five repetitions of printing the word apple. The while statement will allow me to do the same thing, but it also allows me much more flexibility. Let's take a look at the while statement. The while statement, like the for statement, is going to be a structured statement. In other words, there will be a block of statements inside of the while. The syntax of the while is, first of all, the word while, followed by a condition. And this condition is going to be a question that will return a value of true or false. And remember that when we talk about trues and falses, we're talking about what we've called Boolean expressions. And so this condition, by definition, is going to be a Boolean expression. Something that evaluates to true or false. Now, while condition, and then colon, and underneath the structure, or inside of this statement, an indented sequence of Python structures, or Python statements. The idea is that this sequence of statements will be performed while this condition, or while that Boolean expression, returns true. So you can read it this way. As long as this condition is true, perform this sequence of statements. When we perform the sequence of statements, we come back up, check the condition again. If it's still true, we do the statements again. Come back up, check the condition. If it's still true, perform the statements again. In other words, once we start performing these statements in sequence, once we start iterating through this while statement, unless something inside of these statements causes this condition to become false, this will go forever. We call that an infinite loop, and it's a very bad thing. So we always want to be careful to make sure that whenever we write a block of statements inside of a while statement, we make sure that something in those statements will cause that condition It'll cause that Boolean expression to evaluate to false. So let's try to do this and recreate this simple uh, iteration that we built earlier. So instead of having the counting mechanism happen automatically, we're now going to have to be responsible for it. So I'm going to create a variable, and I'm going to use the same name as before. I'm going to create a variable called counter, and I'm going to set it equal to zero. Now I'm going to say while the value of the counter is less than or equal to 4. Because if counter is 0, and I let it become 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, that will be 5 occurrences of the value counter. And if I'm trying to mimic the idea of printing something 5 times, I want to write a process control that will cause 5 iterations. So 
If the counter starts out at 0, as long as the counter is less than or equal to 4, I'm going to go ahead and print the word apple. But now, if I just leave it this way, I'm going to have that infinite loop problem. Because counter is 0, 0 is less than or equal to 4, I print the word apple, when I come back up, counter is still 0. 0 less than or 4 is true, print the word apple, counter is still 0, and so on. So the only solution to this problem is that before I go back up to check the condition, I have to change the value of counter. Well, it would make sense in this case that if I'm trying to go from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 and so on, that I would simply add 1 to the value of that counter. Now what's going to happen? Counter starts at 0. 0 less than or equal to 4 is true. I print the word apple. Now counter becomes 1. I check the condition again. 1 less than or equal to 4 is true. I print the word apple. Now it becomes 2. 2 is still less than 4. Print the word apple. It becomes 3. 3 is still less than 4. Print the word apple. It becomes 4. Go back up. 4 is still less than or equal to 4. Print the word apple. But now when counter becomes 5, 5 less than or equal to 4 fails. And as soon as that condition fails, the while statement finishes. And so now, if I execute this, notice that I get the same result as before. I get five occurrences of the print of the word apple.